Now, if you've been following my course in adventure game programming up to now, you might have got a bit lost as to exactly where we are in the state of development. So in this lesson, I'm going to give you a quick overview. This is my C-sharp project. If you've been following in Java, remember that you can download all the Java source code for equivalent programs, in fact, much more advanced adventure games than I'm showing so far, as well as the C-sharp code from bitwisebooks.com, all freely available. Uh, and I've also got two books on the subject which go into far more detail than I yet had a chance to go to in this course. Now let's quickly go through the code. So this is program.cs, this is the startup file of my C-sharp adventure game. All it does is it has a main loop and it creates a new game object. And what's the game object? Well, this is in game CS. Let me just uh, reduce this window so we can see more code. So game, cla game class is where everything really starts. I've got four room objects declared up here and a room list class, which is the map. I'll look at that in a moment. And an actor class defines the player object. Then the game constructor runs when the program starts and it calls two methods, init game and start game. Well, init game just creates the map. You can see that here um, with the rm.noexit, rm.cave, etc. That's an rm enumerated type, which I explained in a previous lesson. So these are the rooms of my game. I then create the map and I simply add the rooms to it. And I also put the player in a room, in room zero. Then the start game method uh, runs and that displays this uh, introductory message saying where you are. And then it runs the main loop and this main loop continues until the game ends. That is until the player enters Q and it calls read line to get a line of text, uh, run command to do something with it and then right line to display any messages. I've explained most of this code previously. So this is the pass command code. This has all been ex explained in previous lessons, the run command uh, look. So that displays a description of the room and the player enters the command look. Move player I've rewritten as I've explained previously. Move player previously dealt with uh, indexes into an array. Well, now, of course, I've got a map that is a type of dictionary. And so it has to find this RM uh, constant value. So that's all there is in the game class. If you want to check your own code or if you want to write any code, obviously pause the video and look at, uh, at this in a bit more detail. Add consts, I've got this class here. Well, that's where the rm enum is defined. So that has one name, one identifier for each room. And then no exit is, uh, I can put that in a, in a room object to, to indicate that there is no room in that compass direction. Game objects, I've put that in a little folder here. Thing is the base object in my game. It really defines everything, the actor and the rooms. And later on, when I add treasures, everything is going to descend from thing. All a thing is, is an object that has a name and a description. And that's really uh, all there is to it. And it's just got properties to get at those private string variables. Now let's look at actor. Actor defines the player. Well, all actor really has is a room, which is uh, the location, the, the room that the player is currently in. Uh, actor descends from thing, so it inherits name and description. This is the uh, constructor method. And then again, it's got a location property to return, to set or return the current room. Room is again a descendant of things, so it inherits name and description. This is its constructor. It has four extra variables. These are RM, the, the room enumerate, uh, enumerated constant uh, that I showed earlier, and those indicate what room is in any particular campus direction. And it also has describe, so if you call that, it returns 
the name and description of the room in this formatted string so you can look at a room and it will tell you a description. Then the thing that we added in the last lesson was this room list. So instead of just a linear array or array list or some linear form of list, I've now created a dictionary. In fact, room list is a descendant of dictionary. It inherits dictionary and it types it to rm, that's the key. rm, remember, is defined in advconsts and room is the value. So this is used to identify any particular room and this is the room itself. Uh, fairly simple, it just returns a room at, that is, it looks for the key in the dictionary and then it returns the value, the actual room that's associated with that key. And once again, it has a describe method and this just goes uh, through the lists and returns the descriptions of the rooms. And that is pretty much everything that is in this game up to now. So we've got quite a long way. You can now have a player that moves around a map and looks at rooms and goes from one room to another or finds no exit. The thing we need next is treasures. Every adventure game needs treasures to pick, collect and solve puzzles with. So that's what I'll discuss in the next lesson.